Did you think that filling full was less important than pouring forth? What issues from an empty cup? Gather when it is given to you to receive, that your giving might leap from your abundance rather than stumble from your lack. Welcome to Amrita, a rejuvenation workout. Perhaps never before in human history have health, longevity, and personal well-being been so highly valued by such a broad spectrum of Earth's inhabitants. Just living a long life is not enough. Medical science can keep some bodies going long after they've worn out. Perhaps the emphasis should be on living our allotted time with vitality and good health. Amrita draws from the Eastern traditions of Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, and Yoga by addressing not just the mechanical relationships of muscle and sinew, but by emphasizing our bioenergetic nature as well. Recent medical opinion has favored for most of us frequent moderate exercise over strenuous exertion. Meditation has also been demonstrated as effective in reducing the adverse effects of stressful living. The Eastern traditions of Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, and Yoga have shown over centuries that using mind and spirit to nurture, amplify, and direct a person's bioenergy, his life force, can bring about positive changes in health, strength, and sense of personal well-being. This is at the heart of most Asian martial arts and traditional healing systems. Amrita was developed as a means to help the practitioner look and feel younger and more energetic. Three criteria had to be met. One. It could produce results in 20 minutes a day. Two, it had to be sufficiently low impact to allow almost anyone to benefit. And three, it must work its magic primarily through the awareness and cultivation of internal energy. This last condition was most important. It seems the only really effective way of escaping or slowing the entropy that consumes the physical body is to draw on a source that transcends the physical. Aerobics, running, weight training, etc., all have benefits and can make one feel younger for a while. But they each draw on a finite energy source which can be exhausted and can take its toll on injuries, wear on the joints, and stress on the internal organs, maybe even hastening degeneration. Rather than just bombarding the body with more stresses, the Amrita workout blends awareness and intention with gentle physical activity to dramatically improve the effectiveness of a short daily exercise session. Amrita is, of course, not the only possible such workout. It is submitted here because it is accessible, it's fun, and it works. Okay, the format we're going to be using is first go through the exercises, and I'll explain how each one is done, give you a demonstration, run through it a few times, and then we'll go on to the next exercise. And later, we'll put them all together and we'll do the daily workout. First exercise is called the bear. In this one, you sink your weight into your right leg, fold a little bit at the right hip joint, and turn to the right. And then sink into the left hip joint, relax, turn to the left, and then back, left, right. Let your arms and shoulders hang limp so that by turning the waist the arms are moving around in a circular fashion. Like Take a look at it from behind. First shift into the right leg, fold the hip joint, turn to the right, and shift to the left hip joint, turn to the left. And looks like that.
then we shift to the right and turn to the left. And we shift to the left, turn to the right. Same principle with the arms and shoulders. It's a little bit of a different stretch. From behind. Shift to the right, turn to the left. Shift to the left, turn to the right. The next exercise is called Restoring Spring. It's a two-parter. First part, as you exhale, you bring your attention inward. Close your eyes, bring your attention in, and relax at the hip joint, right here at this crease. As if you're starting to sit down, like, like this. So as you're exhaling, you're just starting to sit down, you're bringing your attention inward, relaxing. As you inhale, you open up that crease, extend your hands downward and open the palms. Feel as though your head were being pulled up. Your attention comes out, your eyes open. So it looks like this. Exhale, relax, bring the attention in, fold at the hip joint. Inhale, coming up. Extending your awareness out, extending your hands down toward the floor and your head up toward this, the ceiling. Exhale, relax, coming in, very yin. Inhale, opening, awaking, yang. Second part of this exercise. As if you're drawing circles with your shoulders and you're isolating one shoulder at a time. So the idea is to come forward with your right shoulder, bending at the waist, turning at the waist, come back and bring the shoulder blades together and then coming forward and drawing a circle with your left shoulder. Come back, shoulder blades together and then the right shoulder. So you're facing away from you. It's right shoulder, sinking, turning, come back, bring the shoulder blades together, and then left shoulder. Come back, right shoulder, and left shoulder. Okay, now for some big shoulder circles. As you inhale, Arms come up, back arches, and lean back, and exhale, bring your arms forward, bring your head forward, and bend your back, inhale, coming back, deep breath all the way down to the abdomen, and exhale. From the side it looks like this. Inhale, coming back, arms, big shoulders, big circles, exhale. Relax the whole body and just explore the range of motion with your arms. Let the spine bend back and forth in a nice easy fashion so you get a little bit of workout with the spine. Okay, then as you inhale, Take it back the other way. Opposite direction. Arch your back. Come back. And then exhale, coming forward. Bring your head forward. Inhale. From the side. Inhale. And exhale.
some small circles with the shoulders. Arms out parallel to the ground and just draw some small circles and feel that range of motion inside the shoulder joints. Relaxedly moving this, this fashion helps to open up the any trapped energies in the shoulder joints. Turn it around, take it the other way. Here's a little workout to the uh, uh, various muscles in the rotator cuff. Yeah. From here, we move side to side like this. Try to shift your weight and extend your arm, lead arm, opening up the joints. Relax, but extending out as if someone were pulling on your fingers. Try to keep the arms parallel to the ground as you do it. Relax the trailing arm back and forth. Feel the stretch along the torso. Gradually allow yourself to extend a little farther and as you get the feel for it. Bring your arms down. Now we're going to work the neck. Large circles with the neck. Again, we're just exploring the range of motion not forcing anything. If you run into a lot of muscular tension there, just gradually work at, work at it. Don't force it. If you feel any pain, just take it easy. Relax. Cut back on the range. Take it the other way. Uh, do that a few times. if you're just rotating your skull on the very top vertebrae of your, of your backbone and just explore the range of motion right up there. Let your head gradually move. And this, both these exercises help to free up the neck muscles and the tension to get stuck there. Other way. Good. Now bring your hands behind your head, lace the fingers and gently allow the weight of your arms to bring your head down, releasing the backbone, opening up the joints in the spine and just every time you exhale just allow yourself to sink a little lower letting go of the tension. Again, don't force anything. Come back up. Grab your head and gently stretch it to one side. Don't force it, just gentle stretch. Other side. And back. Now without bringing your shoulders forward, try to look at your right heel over your shoulder just by extending your neck. And try your left shoulder. Not many people are going to be able to do this. The next two exercises are a couple of my personal favorites. First one's called lifting the sky. You begin with your feet, shoulder width or hip width, your hands together with the fingers pointing toward each other, knees bent, and your pelvis tucked under. As you inhale, bring your hands up in front of the body until they're overhead. And as you hold your breath, extend your hands upward. At the same time, feel like you're sinking down into the floor. Reaching up, holding breath, and feeling though your arms are filled with energy. Exhale, and your arms come down to the sides. Relax. And you can feel the energy moving down your arms 
loosen off your fingertips. As you inhale, feel as though someone were pulling your arms down toward the floor, opening up the joints, at the same time pulling your head up, your whole body expanding. Exhale, back to center. We begin. Inhale, hands come up. In. Hold the breath as you extend upward, lifting the sky. Exhale, arms come down, sinking into the ground. Inhale, extend downward, feel as though someone are pulling your fingertips down toward the earth and your head up. Exhale. Next exercise is called Embracing the Moon. And this one, exhale, allow your body to just relaxedly drop down. Feel the connection from the feet up to the legs, up the back, down the shoulders, down the arms, to the hands, fingertips. Drop your head. As you inhale, come up, arms extended in front of the body. So they come up overhead. At this point, it's as if you're holding a ball, like a cantaloupe size, in your hands. Also another ball, big ball, in your arms. Hold your breath as you lean back, arching your back. Looking through the, the small ball, as if you're looking at the moon. Exhale, arms come down to the sides. Slowly feel the energy moving down your hands, down your arms. Inhale, extend, arms downward, opening the joints. Exhale, sinking. Inhale, coming up. Hold the two balls overhead as you lean back, arching your back. Exhale. Inhale. Extend downward. From the side, it looks like this. Exhaling, going down. Inhale, breathe in through the nose. You come up, arms relax, whole body's relaxed. Hold the balls, hold your breath. Exhale through your mouth as if you're blowing out a candle. Inhale, opening up, extending down. And exhale, sinking down. Okay, first Tibetan is down with your feet shoulder width, arms out to the sides, and we're going to be spinning clockwise. Hands are palms down. So, as you turn, keep your balance as you're going around. And one way you can do that is to look at an object in the room over one shoulder, pick it up over the other shoulder as you spin around. Don't exaggerate how fast you want to do it at first. Get used to it. A lot of us haven't done this since we were six years old, so you want to take it nice and easy. After you've done it a few times, you pause. Take two deep breaths. Nice, deep abdominal breaths. And you'll do that after each one of the Tibetans. The second Tibetan is done lying flat on your back. 
Notice with the feet are pointing toes up, hands by your hips, palms down, and as you inhale, initiate it by bringing your head up a bit, and then lift your legs and point your toes toward the sky. Exhale, coming down, lower your head, lower your legs, point the toes towards the sky. Inhale, coming up, point the toes upward, exhale, coming down. Inhale, and exhale. After that, do another two cleansing breaths. We'll go to the third Tibetan. This one's done on your knees. Notice that the toes are tucked under, not back like this, but underneath. Hands are on the thighs behind the, uh, the buttocks. Head is down so the chin is almost touching the chest. Body's relaxed. As you inhale, come back, arch your back, bring your head back. Exhale, coming forward, head down. Inhale, coming back. And exhale. Inhale, exhale, the fourth Tibetan is a lot easier to, to do than it looks, but start off sitting up toes pointing up toward the sky, the hands by the hips with the fingers pointing forward, head down with the chin touching the chest. As you inhale, come up on the heels, bring your body up, your head back. So you have something like an inverted table there, or actually a table. Lean down, and Inhale, coming up, exhale, inhale, exhale. And we'll do the fifth Tibetan. This one, your hands are about two feet apart, your feet about the same. Knees are off the ground. Notice that the toes are tucked under. And arch your back, keeping the uh, knees off the ground. As you inhale, just bring your buttocks up, tuck your head under. Exhale, down, and arch the back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Take two more cleansing breaths. And then you can lie down for a couple of minutes and just allow that energy to move through you. Just lie down on your back in a relaxed position and just allow the energy to move through you. And just Dig on the sensation. The physical movements of Amrita are beneficial in themselves, but to dramatically enhance their effectiveness, we bring the elements of awareness, intention, and breath to the process. These factors are no secret to the ancient Eastern esoteric tradition, but it's just in the past few decades that this idea has gained broad acceptance in the West. There are some techniques and principles to help cultivate your chi or internal energy. One, you gotta feel it. Allow yourself to open to the sensations of your body. This is fundamental. 
It's a major step in resolving the mind-body split and immediately brings about a fundamental healing. Two, let go. In Tai Chi, we have a term, sung. It means to let go, relax, sink. Stop fighting the pull of gravity. It means to let go of excess tension by finding out exactly how little effort it takes to do the job. Stop fighting yourself. Three, imagery. The body responds more readily to imagery than to symbolic language. Getting the idea of energy flowing like water or of breathing through your fingertips gives your body a map for the action. Four, relaxation. Energy flows more freely through relaxed muscles. Five, energy can be generated mentally by holding two points in opposition. An example is to prepare mentally to lift your arm, place the intent, and in slow motion begin to lift, but never give the muscles the command to actually execute the action. A type of energy can be felt. You can also feel it when you extend your arms slowly and relaxedly, as if someone were gently pulling on your fingers, allowing the joints to gently open. Six, breathing. Conscious, relaxed, deep breathing is a very powerful tool. There are many varied breathing techniques that produce specific effects. We're only interested in one here, which could be called basic or natural breathing. You can experience it by doing this. As you exhale, either through your nose or your mouth, push in with your fingers on your abdomen. Your body will let you know when it's time to inhale. Breathe in and allow your belly to push your fingers. Always inhale through the nose. Try keeping these ideas in mind as you go through the exercises in the workout section. Amrita, the 20 minute rejuvenation workout. The bear. Sink all your weight into one leg by folding at the hip joint and turning from the waist in the same direction. Empty all the tension from your shoulders and arms. Let your head move with the torso, keeping your nose in line with the navel. This is a great exercise to do first thing in the morning or as a pick-me-up any time during the day. Now turn in the opposite direction of the weight shift. If you're shifting on the left leg, turn to the right. Allow your fist to gently strike the body. This energizes the body and helps to form a protective layer of chi. The bear gently stretches the back muscles and stimulates the spine. It helps to move the fluids from the center of the body. It opens the shoulder joints, and it helps to center you. Restoring spring, part A. As you exhale, fold to the hip joint as if you're sitting down. As you inhale, open up and expand upward. Exhale and close your eyes, draw your attention inward. Inhale, open your eyes and bring your awareness out. As you inhale, expand downward with your hands as if someone were pulling on your fingertips. As you exhale, relax the fingers. As you inhale, open them and spread them. As you exhale, everything sinks. Inhale, feel your head being drawn up by the crown point. Exhale, inhale. Restoring spring, part B. Isolate each shoulder as you do this exercise. Turn from the waist, bend, sink. This helps free up the shoulders and release some of the trapped energy in the trunk muscles. Try to bring the shoulder blades together as you come up. Big shoulder circles.
Inhale as you raise your arms. Exhale as you bring them down. Bend over from the waist. Arch your back as you come back. Don't force anything. Just gently explore the range of motion in your shoulder joint. Feel your reach expanding as you come up. Now change the direction of the arms, bringing them up and back. Again, inhale as you bring the arms up. Also take the opportunity to explore the range of motion in your backbone. Extend your awareness through your feet. Feel your connection with the earth. Allow the energy to extend all the way out to your fingertips. Gently explore the range of motion with the small shoulder circles. This helps open up the heart energy. And all these shoulder exercises help to free up the tension that gets trapped in the shoulder muscles. Side to side. As you do this exercise, get the feeling that someone is gently tugging on your fingers. Feel a gentle stretch of the torso muscles. Inhale as you extend your arm. Exhale as you come back to center. Feel all the joints in the arms and shoulders opening. This allows the energy to travel much more freely to the fingertips. Next sequence. Gently explore the range of motion. Don't push anything to the point of pain. Very gentle stretch. No special breathing pattern here. Just breathe naturally. in the opposite direction. Now try a smaller circle. Rolling the head on the very top of the vertebrae. Again, a very gentle exploration. Allow the weight of the arms to gently stretch the neck muscles. You can feel this one all the way down to the large muscles of the back. Each time you exhale, let go of some more of the tension. Let's try it to each side. Keep your shoulders still and try to look at your heel. Lift the sky. We're going to have some fun with this exercise. As you inhale, your arms come up, circling in front of you, point overhead. Hold your breath as you extend upward. Exhale, 
Your arms move down relaxedly to the side. Feel the energy moving down your arms and off your fingertips. Inhale as you extend your hands down toward the earth, feeling pulled up by your crown point of your head. Exhale. As you inhale, the arms come up again. Hold the breath as you press up, at the same time feeling yourself sinking down into the earth. Exhale. Arms are relaxed and the energy is moving down your arms and off your fingers. Inhale, your hands open, your arms extend down toward the earth. Exhale. Visualize that you're breathing in a white mist through your fingertips and up your arms. Allow it to deposit its energy in the marrow of your bones. As you exhale, see the mist going out your fingertips somewhat grayer as it carries out toxins and impurities. Breathe in the white mist through your fingertips. Allow it to condense in the marrow of your bones. Exhale, allowing the gray mist to go out through your fingers. Inhale. Exhale. Continue to breathe in through your fingers, allowing the energy to permeate your bones, to condense there. Feel yourself sinking even deeper into the earth. Inhale as you extend down. Exhale. Inhale as your arms come up. Hold your breath as the energy permeates your arms, your shoulders, your scapula, your collarbone, and condenses. Exhale through your fingertips, dispelling any waste products. Inhale as you extend down, sinking deeper into the earth. Exhale. Embracing the moon. Feel the connection through your feet, up your legs, up your back, down your arms, to your fingertips. Inhale as you come up, extending your arms in front of you. Hold your breath as you lean back. Your arms are curved, as are your hands. Exhale as you bring your arms down to the sides. Inhale, gently extend your arms down toward the earth, opening the joints. Exhale as you extend down toward your feet. Inhale, coming up. It's as if you're holding the moon in your hands. You're looking at it as you lean back, holding your breath. Exhale. Arms come down. Feel the energy moving down your arms and off your fingertips. Exhale as you go down. Inhale, coming up. Breathing in through the fingertips and up the arms, the shoulders, the scapula, collarbone. Allow that energy to condense in your bones as you lean back. Exhale as the arms come down. Breathing out through the fingertips. Inhale and extend, the hands open, fingers spread. This time, breathe in through the fingers and the toes, bringing the white mist up your legs and up your arms, allowing it to condense in the bone marrow. Hold your breath, feeling it condensing in your shoulders and your pelvis. Exhale, breathing out through fingers and toes. The grayer mist going out, taking with it the toxins and impurities. Inhale through fingers and toes. Exhale. Again, breathe through the fingers and toes, bringing the white mist up your legs and your arms into your shoulders, into your pelvis, bringing them both into the spine and circulate that up into your head as you hold your breath. Exhale through the fingers, through the toes.
Inhale as you extend your hands down toward the earth. Exhale. Stand in this posture for as long as you like. Allow the energy to move through you. Next, we'll do the five Tibetans. Here's the first Tibetan. Twelve repetitions of each are demonstrated here. But if you haven't tried the Tibetans before, start with three to six and slowly work your way up to 21. The first Tibetan is great for enhancing vestibular ability. That means balance. This exercise looks a whole lot more daunting than it is. It can be done by just about anybody as long as you take your time and move slowly. If you experience any dizziness, these two cleansing breaths should help. This is the second Tibetan. Remember to point your toes skyward when on the ground and when you raise your legs. Inhale as you lift your legs. Exhale as you bring them down. Get up and take two cleansing breaths. Exhale through your mouth as if blowing out a candle. The third Tibetan. Remember to keep your toes tucked under. Inhale as your head goes back. Exhale as it comes forward. Your spine will become more flexible as you do this exercise, so there's no need to force it. Get up and take two cleansing breaths. If you have trouble getting up and down, you can take your cleansing breaths from the ground. The fourth Tibetan. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you get down. Remember to keep your arms straight. All the work is being done by the legs in the back. If you have trouble getting into this position, don't worry about it too much. There's considerable benefit to be gained by trying, and you will find it gets easier. Try to keep your hands by your hip joints also. The leverage is much better from that position. Get 
Get up and take your two cleansing breaths. The fifth Tibetan. Inhale as you raise your buttocks. Exhale as you come down. Here again, little of the work is being done by the arms. Most of it's being done by the legs and back and abdomen. Try to keep your toes tucked under and your knees from uh, touching the ground. Take two cleansing breaths. And lie down and allow the energy to circulate through you. Ideally, it's a nice grassy spot and a white cat will come by. Some tips on doing the Tibetans. Do the same number of repetitions of each Tibetan. Start slow. Do at least three, but don't force it at first. These exercises are very powerful, and overdoing it may release more energy than the circuitry of your body can easily handle. You may feel lightheaded or dizzy or just a little jumpy. This won't cause any damage, but may be uncomfortable and may discourage your continuing a very healthy exercise. Build up slowly. Add one repetition at a time, building to 21. The full daily benefit can be gotten from 21 repetitions. Doing more won't hurt. It's just not necessary. Don't be discouraged if you can't easily perform some of the exercises at first. Start slowly and patiently build up. You will get stronger and more energetic. Even half executed with good intention, these exercises will bring results. Not only do the Tibetans give the spine a really good workout, they stimulate the nerves along the backbone and massage the internal organs. But perhaps more important, the Tibetans are reputed to balance the seven chakras, considered in yoga to be the primary energy centers of the body. From my own experience, I'm not certain if that's what they do, but they do generate an immense amount of energy for the small time and effort expended. The Tibetans are a powerful and valuable tool. Respect their power and they'll be a good friend. Amrita is designed as a 20-minute rejuvenation workout, which can be done at any time in very limited spaces. If the opportunity exists, it is best done first thing upon rising and before eating. In general, it's best not to do this or any exercise right after a meal. If you can do it in nature, on grass or on a beach, do it. The results will be enhanced. But don't let that lack postpone a session. With practice, the energetic connections to the earth and sky get easier to make. The exercises of Amrita stand very nicely on their own, thank you. They are rooted in traditional energy exercises and enjoy some individual attention. Feel free to do the bear, lifting the sky, embracing the moon, or any of them, whenever it seems appropriate. Just be sensitive to your energy state and don't overdo it. The five Tibetans, however, should always be done as a set and with the same number of repetitions for each. I hope these exercises will be beneficial to you. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me at Amrita.
Post Office Box 141207, Staten Island, New York, 10314. Phone or fax, 718-720-0367. 